Now, remember that Twitter fight between Hillary and Donald last week, the one where Hillary told Trump to delete your account? Well, take another look at Trump's response, where he asks Clinton about the 33,000 emails she destroyed. That's not a bad line. But it turns out Trump may have his own deleted email problem. But he was accused of destroying emails sought in a civil suit 10 years ago. USA Today piece and others reporting this as well say that in 2006, when a judge ordered Trump's casino operation to hand over several years' worth of emails, the answer surprised him. The Trump Organization routinely erased emails and had no records from 96 to 2001. Defendants in a case that Trump, uh, in the case that Trump brought, said this amounted to destruction of evidence, a charge that has yet to be resolved. Now, even the judge seemed incredulous, as transcripts noted. If somebody starts to put forth as a fact something that doesn't make any sense to me and causes me to have a concern about their credibility in the discovery process, that is not a good direction to go. And I am really having a hard time with this. At the time, Trump's IT director testified that till 2001, Trump executives used personal email with dial-up access, even though Trump launched his own high-speed provider back in 98 and was wiring Trump Tower with well, it. he what launched it for Trump Tower as a selling point. Thank you very much. Another Trump worker said Trump had no process for preserving emails before 2005, yet Trump keeps hammering Hillary over the same issue. Take politics out of this for a second, Mayo. Does he have an exposure problem there? Um, he does, but it's not the same as Hillary Clinton's because when you go back to 1996, all of this was relatively new. There were no real e-discovery uh, <laughs> protocols. Lots of people were trying to wrap their mind around electronic discovery and how you can preserve it. So there is a spoliation issue, but it's much less. Also, Donald Trump at that point would not necessarily be the person who's in control of all these emails. It's probably someone who worked for his but organization. Has but, I, but I meant to ask that, Mayo, which is the argument my secretary did it, right? If you're the head of an organization and you have a policy in terms of retention of records or whatever else, is it enough to say, I didn't know they shredded them, I didn't shred it's them? It's more plausible being the head of the organization when you're not a governmental entity, yes. none of that information is classified. Um, yeah, it's much easier for him to make that argument than it is for the Secretary of State to he make that argument. Has a Where does the buck stop? He has perfectly he's got, legal behavior. Listen, he's a businessman, and he wants to purge his emails after a few years. There's it so would be different. It stuff would be to different. Hit the guy on. It would be different if you were in anticipation of litigation exactly. and you start to purge the emails. Then you can say, "Listen, he's you and you knew you were going to need these okay, emails, but and you got rid of them." You brought cases against yeah. corporations where you're trying to find pattern and you're trying to find what they knew and when they knew. It. What happens if there's a destruction of evidence in a key window of time here, and they were destroyed after the fact here for no reason, uh, and if they argue a no, preservation of service document base. retention well, One of the first things you ask is, what is your document retention policy? And that could be five years, seven years, ten years. If they are in violation of their own document retention policy, then they have uh, what's exposure to something. If you get to trial, something called spoliation where you actually have to prove that the documents would have been relative, relative and they would have been on point if the court decides to so give So it's incumbent on the person bringing the case yeah, against the company. Yeah, which is a difficult yeah. thing to do sometimes because you're, pro you're trying <laughs> to say the things that have been destroyed would have been good for me in proving my case. But you can get it because it goes against their own policy. And once that happens, the, the presumption that if you read the spoliation charge as a lawyer, it's horrible if it's read against you. You take that, you can assume as a juror that, that evidence in the light most favorable to the, to the person that uh, an adverse you know, yeah. The, the yeah, government really prosecuted Arthur Anderson for destroying documents, convicted Arthur Anderson, put thousands and thousands of innocent people destroyed out of work, company. destroyed the company, case went up to the U.S. Supreme Court, I think it was 2001, they said this is, this is nonsense, you can't convict somebody for this, and threw the conviction out. So this is in the same time period, it's not remotely criminal. Now in 2002 they passed Sarbanes-Oxley, and now there are retention policies that corporations must adhere to, and the CEO, to your point Rich, has to attest and Sign certify. So now, many, many years later, he can't bury his head in the sand, but this is in the in, this is the Wild well, West. Rich, I will say that many companies, when there are bad documents, even with all this, they take them all and they burn of them course they right do. away. Because re once you have those documents and they say those really horrible things, there's nothing you can say. It's kind of like the argument about Nixon. You should have burned the tapes in the front right, lawn, right? right? The, the, the problem with this that I'm, I'm listening to is this. I mean, you know, you're, 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 
you're engaging in an assumption, and the assumption is that the public is going to pick up on these little technicalities. No, the but fact they can that, pick no, up no, on no, Secretary no, no, no. of State versus CEO. Yeah, yeah, yeah I understand that. I understand that. But the public also picks up on the fact that she's not the sec first Secretary of State to do it. Right. And despite the investigation, there's been no evidence, no smoking gun, that anything was actually more classified. What I'm saying is, it's sort of like... The, the, the pot calling the kettle black. Yeah. Trump Trump cannot come out and hold yeah. her to task for the emails that she destroyed when it comes out that while he was in litigation, he did the same. No, well, the difference, though, Bill, is that, like, again, those, States, Trump was in a private organization as opposed yeah, to having get. classified it's information. So you're right. It, it appears to be that way. And to Doug's point, if you really have bad documents, destroy those documents. Well, I'm not saying destroy those <laughs> documents, of course. <laughs> but if those documents to happen to be to destroyed, the if those documents get destroyed, <laughs> you're better off than having an adverse inference because the adverse inference uh, at, or the adverse inference hurt you more because, well, it depends. Sometimes it may hurt you more, but quite often <laughs> you're better off with the adverse yeah, inference yeah, because bad enough yeah. now Why you have a jury that's trying Trump to figure out what it is. Stick his foot in his mouth and you don't have to reach back Hey, just one thing on the Trump thing. And people... Between Texas and Florida right now, I ask these guys, the idea that an attorney general, even an assistant AG, will have an active investigation yeah. because of Trump you, and then all of a sudden, they drop the case while people in their own office say, hey, there's something here, and then magically they get a contribution? In one case, months later, the other one a couple uh, of years later? Now you're talking that's something. really I bad. was thinking about this today. Two words for you, Mark Rich. What could be a bigger quid pro quo well, yeah. than the pardon you, of you Mark know, Rich? You got to put, you're a decade <laughs> behind me Mark and you're still Rich. in. Mark Rich. All right, coming up next here while we contemplate that one. How can you talk one. about quid pro quos without mentioning Mark Rich? Uh, defense lawyers um, in Bridgegate. Um, this is probably the only guy other than uh, Furnish who's going to be the attorney general possibility for uh, Trump here. Um, they're comparing Chris Christie to Tricky Dick Nixon because the New Jersey governor will not hand over phone records and emails. Could the court subpoena them, or will Christie succeed in blocking that?